Hey everybody. <clears throat> hey, I'm, uh, this is Matt, friendly neighborhood Matt. I'm finally uploading another video, um, just doing another quick, not so much an unboxing as I am just going through some of the stuff I've gotten. Uh, we, I've had a couple of events the last few, uh, the, uh, last few weeks. Uh, August has really been crazy, and this weekend is, of course, Dragon Con. I'm in the middle of working on Red Man Volume 2. Um, speaking of which, uh, let's see if I can reach it from where I am. Ugh! I've got my, I got the English version of Red Man. Uh, this is my latest book, um, mostly intended for a Japanese audience, but uh, the good folks at Night Shining had released it in English, and it's available on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. Um, it's all fans will appreciate that. Um, yeah, so oh, this is one of my favorite pages. Is uh, is this one here? I really love how this came out. Um, uh, for those who don't know, Red Man is an obscure Japanese superhero from the 1970s, and, uh, we got the license to revive it, and it just kind of became a cult hit after, uh, Super Eye Productions started uploading the episodes to YouTube, and it, uh, yeah, we've even got the, uh, uh, we've got an intro, um, let me find it, by Shinichi Oka, who was the, uh, cameraman on Red Man. He is also, uh, became the, he also became, like, I believe this, the... CEO, not the CEO, but like the, the, the head of Tsuburaya, basically, like the big cheese. So, anyway, that's enough of self-promotion. Uh, in the meantime, I wanted to do a little bit of uh, house cleaning first. Um, uh, first of all, I really hope this uh, Ron Wasserman uh, playlist uh, doesn't get flagged, um, just because I'm... Uh, we, I did Power Morphicon last weekend, uh, not... Uh, you know, about a week ago, and that was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun before that. Did Decimate All Kaiju, recorded a video for it. Let me actually do something here. Recorded a video for it, and, um, lost it because I ran out of space on my iPad. Uh, working on some different ways of, uh, moving forward, but, uh, in the meantime, I've also got a couple of other people who I know are, um, you know, I, I, I have at least one person who is still offering to do editing and stuff. I don't know if we'll do much editing on these videos specifically. We'll try some in the future. I've just got to get the videos to him. But I wanted to go ahead and record something real quick and upload it because I have not uploaded anything except for uh, the um, the gift-giving video for my friend Jennifer because I gave her that sketch by Nishikawa. So, anyway, um, the first thing uh, I wanted to show off is uh, something I got today, which is... Um, it's got this little cover on it. Let me get the paper off of it. Uh, it's a little, just a little self-published comic called I Don't Wanna Puke in Tijuana by Lisa Naf Nafziger. I hope you're pronouncing your last name by right. But I, I met Lisa uh, in, um, uh, in Chicago at G-Fest earlier this year. And uh, I, I just, I, I think she's got great artwork. Uh, very charmed by her... Um, her Tumblr page. She's got all these uh, cute little kaiju page, uh, cute little kaiju illustrations on Tumblr. Um, I um, need to find her actual Tumblr. Huh. Well, I've got her website, which is Lisa Navziger. Dot Um, I'll I'll po I'll post her Tumblr page in the description. But yeah, she just made this cute little book about her going down to Tijuana and helping out with these um these kind of kind of a habitat for humanity type thing called uh uh bittersweet ministries i believe um and um uh yeah bittersweet ministries and uh i don't know it's just a cute little story about going on tijuana and uh making drawings for local kids and stuff and i don't know it's the kind of um it's the kind of story i really like so i'm just talking about that anyway uh, let's get to the meat and potatoes. Uh, first off, some stuff I got from Power Morphicon. This is really fun. I've wanted these since I was a kid, and I spotted these at the Planet X, uh, at the Planet X, uh, toys booth, which is Scott Zollner's booth. They had Mas Saban's Masked Rider. I'm gonna adjust the audio on that for a second. There we go. That's annoying. Anyway, uh, Saban's Masked Rider action figures. I used to have this one when I was a kid, and then the uh, antennae broke off. So, uh, now I got a new one. Um, I also got 
the uh, Mutating Combat Chopper. I didn't even know they made this. I knew they made Chopper the bike. I didn't know they made one that actually mutated because uh, in the show, I don't know if this was a conceit of the American version or not. I haven't seen Kamen Rider Black RX in its entirety, but uh, they the vehicles would pop out of the ground as bugs and then turn into the vehicles. And I always, as somebody who's a pretty fervent critic of... Uh, uh, Ameritoku of how American uh, ad, uh, uh, American series adapt Tokusatsu. I always thought that um, the, the Mass Rider, um, the lore for Mass Rider was kind of interesting because it was like, oh, okay, he's an alien, he's come to Earth, he's got special powers, this kid's the Superman thing. But then it's like, no, no, his species evolved from bugs. That's why everything they do is bug themed. And I think that's a really, that was a really cute conceit for an otherwise weird and not very good show uh last but not least i saw this and i had to get it karate kicking decks it's it's decks it's it's master writer's human form or not human form his uh his civilian form i like how he looks like howie mandel from bobby's world uh look look at him um it's cute though it's cute that they actually make stuff like this um Okay, so, uh, what else we got here? Oh, got something here from my buddy, my buddy, uh, uh, uh Alan got this for me from Amazon Japan. Um, it's one of those Go Gojira DVD boxes. Uh, this is volume 42, and it's Mothra 2. These are these cool, uh, DVD boxes. They come with all kinds of pack-in goodies. Uh, they come with, like, a booklet that's kind of a, a, a time capsule, a promotional material from about the time the movie came out. Uh, there's indication that there's some, that there's, I think there's a, I think there's a hoodie in here. Uh, let's pop it open and find out. Oh God. Oh, oh God. Be careful. Okay. Uh, I've been waiting to do this, uh, for like the couple of weeks since I got it. Um, I have a really, I have a weakness for those nineties Mothra movies. That's why I got Mothra 2. Um, here's the DVD. Yeah, maybe that, you know what, the hoodie might just be a giveaway, so, or, or a mail away or something, so, which is okay, um, it's just, it's a Varan hoodie, though, and I have such a huge, I, I'm such a weird hipster when it comes to kaiju stuff, so I, I, I have a soft spot for so much of the weird, obscure stuff, like Yamato Takeru, and, um, the Mothra Trilogy, and Varan and stuff, just, just these little weird things that are kind of mediocre on their own, but... So anyway, uh, let's see, um, I got a couple other things, everything's kind of spread out, so I don't want to go through, uh, too much, oh, I got, uh, this from the good people of Boom Studios, uh, gave me this, for those of you who don't remember, I, I actually did a cover for GoGo Power Rangers number one, uh, it was a San Antonio exclusive for Heroes of Fantasies, uh, but I stopped by their table and uh, talked to a couple of them. They, rec they they remembered me and stuff. So they gave me uh, the Power Rangers archive, which is an amazing archive of Power Rangers comics from the 90s. And you know what? Some of them are actually pretty well drawn. Uh, some of them, uh, although I don't really know what's going on there with the Ninja Megazord's face. But wait, um, it it's just so funny to see because I feel like... A lot of the tonal discrepancies between the Japanese versions and American versions are really exemplified by the comics, because the comics like, like are so they're so '90s comics Marvel style Americana. Um, I, I think this one might be my favorite though. Look at that little Dragon Zord. Like that's the Dragon Zord. He's flying out of the ocean. Oh, yeah, and that picture of Tommy, too. But beyond that, there's actually some really good art in here. Um, and I don't want to I don't shit on the artist too much. I mean, you know. Do they... I like our representation of Morphin Time here. It's just, uh, look, we've got um, pictures of dinosaurs. <laughs> it's just, just very cute. Uh, it's just a nice uh, chunk of Americana in its own right, and I, I'm really glad to have it. It's got some actually got some cool stuff in it, so I appreciate that. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, um, I have so much stuff. Okay, not gonna, not gonna spend too much time on everything, um, that, because I kind of want to blow through everything I've gotten over the last couple weeks. I got, um, my buddy Nick gave me this, uh, really awesome feathered Tyrannosaurus. 
Uh, we now know that Tyrannosaurus probably didn't have this much feathery down. It was probably more localized around, along the back, or maybe even really thin like an, like elephant hair. There's, it probably didn't have the, the plumage, the golden buttery plumage that um, he has here, but it does kind of superficially resemble the T-Rex that I drew for GoGo -Go Power Rangers number one, so... Uh, so thanks, Nick. I really appreciate that. Um, Nick also gave, uh, this is technically Morgan's, uh, technically for my wife, but it's a really cute book called Animals of a Bygone Era, uh, an illustrated compendium by Maja Sethstrom. Uh, that's an awesome name. It's, um, Icelandic? I, I don't know. Uh, but it's really cute. It's a, it's an adorable little book with lots of cute little illustrations of different prehistoric animals that are now extinct of course uh there are specifically no dinosaurs in the book there's one dinosaur at the very beginning just to illustrate that there are no dinosaurs in this book there's just like stuff like this the um opabinia um a lot of creatures that i i i i like to think of myself as a bit of a paleo expert but there's a lot of creatures i just i just don't know because i i've only got so much so many so many hours in the day to memorize this stuff saber tooth cats stuff like that so really cute highly recommend it um, let's see, uh, things are a little bit, uh, crazy right now. I haven't had time to clean up my studio in the last couple of weeks. So, um, I think what we will do, oh, um, got a couple of Mothra books as well. Like I said, I've got a weakness for these, uh, Teta Bikun Mothra books, but, uh, this video is already going on a little long, so, um, Let's see, uh, you know what? I'm sure I could go over more, but for the meantime, uh, let's go ahead and uh, crack open the big tamale, the big taco, the big burrito. Oh, just got this in the mail. Uh, this is, a, I, I'm actually, I, I hadn't intended to leave this one for the end of the video, so uh, this is a nice little treat for everybody who stuck around for the 12 minutes this has been recording. Uh, I'm just going to cut this sucker open. Ooh. That's a pretty good little bit from, I really like this song, uh, I Will Win by Ron Wasserman. Uh, he recorded it for Power Rangers way back in the day. And, um, okay, and I don't know, it's just one of my favorites of his songs, aside from Go Go. Um, okay, this one is pretty, it's pretty exciting. Oh boy. Potent. <laughs> Ugh, don't much care for the uh, smell of newspaper. Oh yeah, you can already tell by the logo. It's the Spinosaurus. Yeah. This is very exciting. This is a um this is the Jurassic Park Legacy, Jurassic World Legacy collection from Target. Now, I wasn't really a fan of the um, of the Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom movie. Anybody who follows me on one of us .net or uh, anywhere else, or was there at GFest, knows that I was a pretty critical of the film. I, I I thought that it had a terrible script. I did. I thought the characters were really bad. I thought the twist was really bad. Um, if you like it, that's fine. I don't. I'm not going to judge you, but. I tell you what, they have been nailing is the merchandising. Uh, Mattel really knocked it out of the park. Um, and, and this Spinosaurus is awesome. It's big, which is, which is a, it's the right size a Spinosaurus figure should be, especially because it's to scale with the Tyrannosaurus. Um, I'm tempted to go over there and go get it so we can do a quick size comparison. Let me go ahead and do that. Let's see if I can set this here without it. Oh, that's not going to stay. I, let me very carefully get up, and I'm going to talk to you guys as I walk over here. Oh, God. Got a lot of, got a lot of stuff. Hang on. So, right now, what I have is the, um, is the, uh, uh, same as the, is the Extreme Chomp and Rex. I had a few other of the Rexes, but I honestly just didn't have room for them, and I really only needed one Rex, and they all look pretty good. So, let's do a quick size comparison. So, what it looks like is that the, the, the Spinosaurus is appropriately massive. Um, and it is true, Spinosaurus was physically larger than T-Rex. But, um, 
What we now know is that, um, well, what we've always known actually is that since Spinosaurus has such a, a long, delicate jaw, mostly made for eating fish, uh, once a T Rex would have gotten it, I mean, obviously they didn't live anywhere near each other and they were separated by, I think, a few million years as well. Um, but uh, once a T Rex gets its jaws around the Spinosaurus's neck, it would have snapped its neck like and and the spinosaurus's teeth and jaws were not strong enough to probably to to kill a tyrannosaurus tyrannosaurus is, is maybe physically shorter like physically slightly not as long or as tall but it's like it's like a pit bull trying to fight a greyhound or a greyhound trying to fight a pit bull a pit bull maybe physically somewhat like shorter but it's more physically powerful. So Spinosauruses were comparatively delicate because like I said, they were, they, they ate fish. Tyrannosaurus, we have evidence of them crushing bone with their jaws. That So anyway, I, I just think that that just kind of puts to bed the debate. Um, but anyway, uh, still a really beautiful figure and I'm really glad I finally got this. It means I can stop going to Target uh, in the vain hopes of uh, this popping up. Although they also announced a bunch of other Jurassic World figures. So I'm going to have to buy those. I'm sure there's like a ton, <clears throat> a ton more that I could show off. I just, um, this has already been 16 minutes of this video. So I really appreciate you guys sticking around uh, with me. Um, like I said, a little bit more housekeeping. I will be uploading, uh, making of videos really soon, drawing illustration videos. In the meantime, go check me out over on, um, oneofus.net or rachelect.com. I'm there pretty frequently doing videos and let's plays and stuff. Um, also going to be starting, uh, Yet another uh, YouTube project here pretty soon. Keep an eye open for it. It's called Disaster Quest. I uh, can't talk about it just yet because it's not out yet. Uh, we're not sure exactly when it will be out, but it'll be out soon. So, uh, yeah. So, until next time, guys. Hold on, I'm going to do my, my thing, my sign-off. I've got to go.